Hello and welcome to the next episode of Digital Twin. Today we will talk about ERP systems and what they are and how they can help your business. Stay tuned. Digital Twin Podcast is a place where technology and business is going hand in hand. If you are thinking about digitalizing your company, you found the right place. Podcast is hosted by Adrian Stelmach, consultant who implements IT solutions for manufacturing companies. And Paul Pahovic, industrial digitalization expert who helps global companies to optimize production processes. Hey, Adrian. Hey, Paul. <laughs> finally, finally, we, we, we are talking about the ERP systems. You know, for, for a lot of people, this is like the heart, you know, of the company that, that you know, is able to, you know, gather uh, and analyze the data, helps draw conclusions, help, helps uh, to make better decisions. And finally, we are talking about the ERP system. Um, so how about uh, we talk a little bit about the history of the ERP systems? Uh, and history is the same <laughs> for that, but maybe we can try to look at it from different angles or, or maybe you can you know, talk about all the steps on the uh, all the involvement of, of the ERP systems, what they were uh, at the beginning and how they evolved uh, and, and what are we using them for uh, these days? Yeah, sure. Maybe we will start uh, from the definition of what ERP is from someone who is just, you know, uh, tuned and doesn't exactly know what's going on with uh, such details. So. Um, ERP in simple words, uh, this is like definition of enterprise resource planning uh, IT system, you can say. And you, you actually mentioned a good definition because you said that this is the heart of the organization. And if you define it as a heart, you can say that all of the organizations, uh, most important thing for every organization is, uh, you know, the cash flow and uh, the money stream, right? So if you if you define money stream as blood in your in your veins, you can say uh, the 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 one the system who is uh, pumping this blood, this is ERP. So ERP uh, is helping you with uh, various things, uh, from invoices, uh, from you know warehouse planning, from communication between different. Uh, parts of organization from, uh, you know, planning what exactly you have to do and so on. And if you think about any uh, kind of a company, uh, you can imagine, even if it's like one man, you know, one man show company, uh, uh, you, you, you for sure you, you need to have invoices, for sure you need to do something. So for sure you need something to plan and for sure you need something to uh, count exactly uh, how much money you should uh, take from your clients. And more scaled you are, more people you're hiring, uh, more important it is uh, to make it in a way which is, you know, more optimized, more um, business processed and ERP will help you with that. How would you, how would you, because again, ERP is such a broad term. How would you summarize it with one sentence? And, and I will go first and, and, then, and, and okay. then you go uh, because we, we keep talking about like the benefits and, and, and what that software actually does. But it's important to say that this is actually a, like a software application, right? Uh, I mean, it, it seems like it's obvious, but I still wanted to mention that. And that, that software application integrates all the information um in one complete system and then it, it, it helps to streamline uh the data so it can be you know used in um so it can be organized and used in a way that is you know helping the organization making better decisions i think this is like the most simple explanation of the erp or maybe you can try to put it even simpler words <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, you know, if I would like to say it in simple words, I would say that this is like a system for sure. So it's like a, you know, IT system, mm -hmm. which uh, help your business running. <laughs> and uh, if you need uh, one system in your organization, for sure, it will be ERP. More bigger you are, probably more systems you need and more detailed information you need so yeah. and but we will talk about it later on absolutely it, it, it's it's the one system that you definitely need but on the other hand is, is usually not the system that you're starting with <laughs> right because it's, yeah. it's so it's so complex yeah so let's uh, uh 
uh, talk about the history of, of, of ERP, how, how, they, how that software evolved through the years. Yeah, but yeah, sure. But one mm -hmm. thing, uh, uh, everyone, if you think about it, everyone have an ERP in his firm. But sometimes it's just an Excel spreadsheet, mm -hmm. right? It's not like a, like a system defined. It's just like a spreadsheet, which is, you know, customized for your needs. And you have all of the information you ha on it, uh, like tasks, like, for example, you know, invoices, like uh, hours which you spend on a specific customer and so on and so on. But bigger you are, one spreadsheet mm -hmm. isn't that good enough. Uh, okay, so, um, you know, if you think about... Um, history, I would say that uh, ERP systems are involving all of the time. But uh, because, you know, if you if you see modern systems uh, from like 2023 or 2020s, uh, it's way different than, for example, systems which were like 10 years ago. Uh, but uh, the beginning starts, I would say, in 60s. So it's like, you know, uh, related with uh, third industrial revolution, uh, they, you know, the, the the official start I would say it will be like 80s, and it start with M MRP systems, so material requirement planning. So, uh, so the beginning of ERP system was actually warehouse. Uh, because if you think about it, uh, for example, if you are a sales company or you're a you know, production company, uh, warehouse is the place where all of your money is in. So uh, knowing what's going on exactly in the warehouse will help you, uh, you know, make bigger savings and of course uh, make sure that uh, the sales work correctly and salesmen selling what exactly is in the warehouse. So 80s. And it was like a DOS application solutions, you know, sometimes if you're going right now and some kind of, um, you know, um, warehouses where you're bu buying like a, a wholesale uh, things, you, you see like someone have a, you know, a computer with a black screen and it, you, you say, okay, I want like, let's say, um, one liter of paint or something like that and you, he's searching for it and the system tells him exactly what place is, it is in, in the warehouse. And this is exactly how the, how the first uh, MRP systems worked. Okay, so and then in the, in the 90s, maybe 1990s, it started you know, to evolve to be what it is now. But like you said, you know, at the beginning, it still evolves and it, it keeps changing as the technology um, gives us more uh, possibilities and, and, and opportunities. So the, the RPs these days, <laughs> are they using AI, for example? I know this is the question out of blue, but uh, I just wanted to show um, how, uh, how this uh, ERP, you know, evolved and, and, and what it is now, but, but, but also you know the difference between how it was and how it is now uh i'm pretty sure there is ai involved uh can we just you know talk about this three five sentences just just to just to make sure that we show the progress of the erps within the years yeah sure so as i said they started from the warehouse then probably the the second uh, th uh, thing was uh, like invoices and the entire finance accounting and uh, financial controlling areas of the of the business uh, logistics payrolls uh, human resources and so on so more modules uh, systems uh, developed erp systems developed uh, there was more data collected so nowadays we have like tens of different uh, modules in, in the biggest ERP systems. And of course, if you have more data, it means that you can have more opportunities to involve such tools like, for example, artificial intelligence, which you said, because, uh, you know, if you have like terabytes of information about every employee, about every, you know, um, uh, contrahent, about every customer and so on, you need uh, tools which will help you managing with all of this data. And AI is something which for sure is is on uh, right now on, on a trend okay. in ERP in, uh, revolution. Yeah, so you, you mentioned the different, different modules, right? I, I think that would be, you know, a good uh, moment to talk about those modules, right? Because 
mm -hmm. every company probably has different requirements and, and th there is unlimited amount of modules that that that, um, that you can design and, and, and implement within uh, the ERP system but let's start with the fact that you know the ERP um, they were mostly used for the manufacturing companies in the past and now that has changed and evolved and they could be used for like e-commerce uh, uh, platforms and, and, and all that so if we are to talk about um, the, be the, 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 the p potential uh, modules, so there is plenty of them, but are there, are there any modules that are like specifically designed for manufacturing? Uh, yeah, of course, you know, it, it, of course, implementing ERP system and different ERP systems are, you know, uh, some of them are universal. So you can, uh, you, you can, for example, implement SAP or JD Edwards or Microsoft Dynamics, you can implement in any kind of business you want because there have such many modules that you can just choose modules which are fitted to your business. But uh, manufacturing have some uh, specific needs. Uh, for example, for manufacturing, it is very important how to manage a uh, bill of materials, for example, right? Or how to manage the, uh, the raw materials, the resources, um, the, lo the entire logistics, the production planning, right? If you are having machines which are, you know, uh, connecting together s so many different parts, it means that you have to manage uh, and make sure that those parts will be delivered on those machines in a specific time. Uh, also, there's a lot of efficiency modules involved mm -hmm. and a lot of space for automata automatization, right? Because uh, if you imagine, like, let, let's say you can imagine like a company which is, let's compare two, two kind of businesses, right? Uh, first one, it's a manufacturing company, let's say uh, it produces uh, beer. And the second one, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, a company which is like a, a hair salon, right? So uh, you have two different businesses and in this manufacturing one, so the beer, beer uh, production, there is much more space for automatization, the data uh, regarding to, for example, efficiency of how the business works because all of the information could be gathered in the machines and uh, for example in the uh, in the hair salon it's hardly to imagine that you will gather data you know somehow from some kind of sensors to know uh, to know more more or more detailed about how your employees work right sure sure yeah so uh I, I still think that we should uh, maybe define the modules a little better, uh, so be, be, be a little mo more specific. I, I, I think, <coughs> they, again, they seem to be obvious, but 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 not really. I would I would say there are ten <laughs> different basic modules. Not all of them are like specifically designed for uh, for manufacturing, but they all matter for manufacturing as well. So. The, the finance part, finance and accounting part. I think this is the crucial one. Like you said, companies need to think of the cash flow. The companies need to think, you know, how much they have produced and how much of that uh, production is, is available for sale. Just, just, just have to manage uh, the finance part of it. Uh, sales and marketing, you know, it, it does help if the ERP is integrated with the CRM system. So, so they actually, uh, you know, can manage the, um, uh, the sales process the availability of what they're selling and that integration with the CRM helps a lot. Supply chain uh, also, you know, you know, uh, also important. Human resources, that's the one that <laughs> I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's obvious, but it's not, you know, why like f for human resources, for example, you can, you can look at uh, your payroll, you know, the, the payroll of the people, you know, working at the production and creating stuff. They, 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 that, the, the payroll part has to be, you know, uh, included so organization uh, understands uh, the cost that is related to to, to, to manufacturing. Then, then, then there is one dedicated to there's one module that, that is dedicated to, to to manufacturing that, you know, helps with uh, measuring quality control, right? For example, uh, planning, scheduling uh, of, of of that, you know, production. Um, there's also project management uh, module that, that you know that helps to, to run and manage 
um, you know, the, the delivery of uh, the production as a project. Uh, and then um, the one that <laughs> I like the most, uh, because I, I, li I like data and I think data is the future, is business intelligence. Business intelligence, this, this module like, is used um, to make uh, better decisions. And, and maybe, maybe you can talk a little bit about that, as I strongly believe that you know, services like process mining and, and just in general, analyzing data, figuring out uh, the, the, uh, how to be more effective through the data that we collect anyways. We, s we have access to them, but we just don't find any patterns you know, to draw conclusions. So, so that would be something that maybe we can talk uh, a, little, a little more about. So the business intelligence uh, module of uh, the ERP system for manufacturing. Yeah, of course. You know, bec b before we talk about business intelligence, we should say a few words about what is the hierarchy of uh, IT systems in general in manufacturing. So if you if you say it in a, you know, a, a very generally, you would say that there are four layers of IT systems in manufacturing companies. Looking from down, uh, you have a control layer, right? So you have machines, you have uh, different sensors, you have IoT devices, for example, uh, you have, so you have like a raw data regarding to something. It could be a temperature, it could be like, a, you know, a production counter of how many bottles of this beer uh, was produced on a specific machine and so on, right? So this is the first layer. There is a, the, the second layer, you can say this is a layer which is gathering data and uh, visualizing this data, but this raw data, right? And uh, it could be like, for example, a SCADA system or like, a, a, or like some, some kind of a database which collects those information. Then we are going to the third layer and you have their uh, manufacturing execution system. So you have a system which all have data from the second layer or the first layer, uh, but there is a lot of analytics going on because you can have a traceability there. You can have uh, connecting those different information with, for example, pr production orders, or you can uh, connect it with logistics or uh, a lot of different connections there are, but they are using this, uh, this uh, raw information. And then the fourth layer, the last one, you have ERP systems. You have, for example, business intelligence. Um, uh, you can have some AI system, which is, you know, uh, making you a lot of conclusions. But if you think about it uh, in manufacturing company, if you want to implement uh, ERP or business intelligence in the right way, for sure you need to automatize the uh, data flow from the first layer. Because if you don't have it, there is a, you know, a problem because you can have a great uh, AI or business intelligence, but you know, all of the information could be corrupted. Yeah, uh, yeah great. So but now we understand um how to how to look at uh, different levels of collecting and, and managing data and and yeah, it, it does look like the ERP is at the very top because it already uses the, the data that we have collected and and then just helps us uh, make better decisions so I think I think there would be would be a good time now to talk about the benefits right because for people listening and watching uh, we all know that ERP system is required, especially for bigger organizations. Mm, but what would be like the main uh, three to five uh, benefits? We can we can just go one by one, <laughs> and, and 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 you can you can start, or you have, a, yeah. Uh, you know, first of all, I would say it will be better communication, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, let's say, it, it, you know, if you have like three employees in your organization, probably you're sitting like next to each other, you can just talk all day and everyone knows what everyone is doing. But if there is like, uh, let's say 20 or 40 people, it's impossible to, to, to know exactly what's going on. So uh, if you have ERP system on place running, uh, it means that people, uh, uh, can communicate in a better way. And I'm not talking only about like uh, Microsoft Teams or WhatsApp or, or something like that, like chat applications, which ER in ERP, there's also a chat module, which we didn't talk about because it could be. But also 
uh, we are talking about that, for example, if I'm putting some kind of information uh, regarding to, let's say, I, I, I was I finished my work and this is a document which is like saying that I'm done. Everyone in the organization knows that I'm done and someone else can can continue my work. Right. Yeah. Be beautiful. <clears throat> I think we can we can call it um, that it's that, that, that what you describe is like the integration of, of information. So they are not silos and, you know, some people have access to them, some people don't. And then whenever, whenever, you know, they need to make a decision, they maybe have to ask some other people about, you know, what is that number? Because I, I, I cannot access it. But, but, but that, what, what you said kind of shows that this is like one dashboard. I, I'm just going to make it simple for, for, for everyone to see it in the same time. So, so we can make the decision ba based on all the data available, not just on the, am the amount of data that, that you have access to, right? And then for me, the number one would be probably the, the efficiency, you know, because um, if ERP is set up properly, then it can uh, automate a lot of, a lot of uh, tasks, repeatable tasks, tasks that, you know, maybe three or four people had to you know, get together to actually make uh, that kind of conclusion or, or just maybe they needed to enter the data manually, right? So first of all, the efficiency comes from eliminating the human factor, which is always a problem. It takes time and, and, and we are not ideal, so we'll make mistakes. And then there will be, there will be um, tasks that you know, do not require people and they can happen, I don't know, within minutes or seconds. Uh, if we didn't have that one dashboard that ERP is, that that one um, space where, where we gather all the data, then it would require five people to talk, seven meetings, a lot of time, a lot of inefficiencies. So efficiency, I think, is my, uh, my number one. Yeah, about that, if if you allow me to, to say Please a few do. words about <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, you know, dashboards, this is very important part of ERP system, and it's related with your previous question about business intelligence. So, uh, you know, to manage correctly, uh, bigger company you have, more, more data you need probably to manage correctly, and more uh, simple way to, you know, to show this data you need, right? Uh, and uh, for example, um, those dashboards in the, uh, can be used, for example, in some board meetings when you are just uh, seeing the, the, you know, the key KPIs uh, and the key information. And also you see what, why, uh, not only what is the number, like what is your uh, income or, or, uh, or what is your profit, but you also see exactly uh, uh, if you have a proper business intelligence, uh, you know, um, set it up, you need, uh, you, you see exactly places where the money is, you know, uh, disappearing in your organization, right? Because, um, yeah, so th I, I would say this is a, the big thing about, about the, uh, about the, 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 the efficiency, right? So you have a tool to actually, uh, increase the efficiency. Yep. Uh, what's your number two? I'll say that uh, it's related with communication, but I would say this is uh, uh, information uh, uh, which is just in time, right? Uh, any kind of information. And also you are typing or having information in one place and it is spread it in every dashboard on every report right away. Uh, let me give you an example. So let's say you don't have ERP system and you have, you're have you using spreadsheets, right? So you have a different spreadsheets to manage your company. Let's say you have 50 people. Everyone have like tens of spreadsheets. And if you just put one number in the spreadsheet, you have to remember that this number sh should be, you know, put it in a lot of different places. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, manual copying data uh, going on in this kind of situations. But if you have ERP, if you put information in one place, it means that this specific information is spread it everywhere. So it's also uh, makes you, uh, makes the communication better because you know this number right away. And also 
uh, it improves the uh, the efficiency because you don't spend such time to copying the data uh, uh, manually. Yeah, my number two would be uh, automation of uh, reporting. Uh, I think uh, if you are okay, if you have the dashboard accessible, you can make uh, the decisions looking looking at, at the dashboard. But there are conclusions that you can only draw if you have uh, you know proper reports. And, and customizable reports for, for the organization. So, and, you know, and to be able to <laughs> generate those, 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 result, those uh, reports almost automatically, you know, uh, I think this is, this is a game changer. Because, you know, again, maybe two, three, five people had to, do, had to work on this report for some time for that to be accurate. Now, with, uh, with the current, uh, ERP systems, it, it could be you know automated, and uh, the fact that you can access those uh, those reports, you can you can have like templates of those reports that you can get I don't know once a week if you like, you can get it every day, you know depending on uh, how often do you need to make those decisions. I think this is uh, this is big. This is uh, something that I don't think is mentioned uh, very often. Uh, but yeah, if you have access to reports that, that are more than what you can see uh, on your dashboard, everybody, everybody um, is, is informed better of what's, what's happening. And that report, re that report is also giving you a broader uh, perspective than, than just what you can see uh, on the dashboard. So that, that's my uh, number two. What is your number two? Uh, you know, if, if I can comment what you said, you know, it's like um, uh, in ERP, uh, of course, uh, we will talk about, you know, uh, minuses of ERP systems maybe in the next episode. But, you know, it's not like ERP is for everything. For example, I have ERP and I'm, I'm a, a ERP provider and I don't think that uh, ERP will solve all of the problems. Uh, I also like uh, Excel spreadsheets. I, I use it very often, but I use Excel spreadsheet from the data which I export from the ERP system. So I have the information from ERP system. I will export it to the spreadsheet and I will work f with this data to just make a simple calculations uh, for myself. And, and, and this is how it goes because, you know, implementing and making ERP system like num uh, the only one in the organization usually uh, you know doesn't end well but <laughs> we will talk about it in the in the next episode okay so my last uh, benefit because there's a lot of benefits sure. but let's say the last one for today it will be like uh, I would say um, cost con better cost control better cost saving and better resource management right so um, as I said, if you are like a five or 10 people company, probably you're working very well with spreadsheet. But imagine yourself if you are a 50 uh, people company or 100 people company, it is impossible to work efficient, not having a IT system, uh, even a simple one, uh, set it up in place. Uh, if you are, uh, you know, a CEO or a company owner and you are having like a, uh, 100 employees and you or 50 employees or even 30 employees and you don't have any IT systems uh, to manage your company please contact me because <laughs> I would like to know what's your secret sauce because for me it's really impossible yeah great uh, I'm gonna go with my um, last one and, and then maybe we can sum it up and then uh, talk about the takeaways from this episode so regulations uh, and compliance it, it does help with things that are kind of you know difficult to find people responsible for it it's just it's just something that you know can happen on the back end of of, of, of your organization uh, and and it, it's just it's just there uh, also this is this is uh, very often overlooked um, but I think uh, this is yeah. This is my number three. I, I don't know if I if I want to uh, talk about uh, the talk talk more about compliance. I think um, 
I mean, if you want, if you want, we we can we can talk about it, uh, you know, a little bit more. But I think th one of the core functionalities of of ERPs these day is the compliance part, right? Yeah, because, you know, everyone has some customers, right? Uh, and uh, customers also need, uh, you know, information about things they are purchasing. So, for example, you have to document, if you're a manufacturing company, you have to document exactly how your process is going on. Uh, if your process is, uh, you know, pretty simple, uh, maybe the data uh, it, it can be stored in, in ERP system. But if it's complex, there's a various like quality information involved and so on, probably you need ERP and MES systems going on. And uh, for sure, ERP is, is something which will help you not only for uh, better communication internally, but also uh, to make sure that the communication with your customers work, uh, work in a better way. Yeah, so... Uh think we can sum it up and maybe uh, talk about the takeaways sure if you, you, you want to go first please do <laughs> okay so my takeaway will be that uh, you know because if you if you think about uh, that s there's so many things in ERP so many modules modules it could be like this knowledge could be overwhelming right but this is a bright side it, but there is a bright side in this situation because you can start implementing ERP just from simple one module regarding to, let's say, uh, invoices and so on. And then during the learning process, you can just put the other, uh, put some no other modules going on. And we will talk about it in the future. Uh, but this this would be my takeaway. So don't don't you know don't don't think that this is too much like this is too big or this is only for corporations think about it like there's a lot of different systems which are just uh, you know simple and just have specific models and you can just uh, you know um, mm, uh, scale it up in the future you have stolen my takeaway Adrian. <laughs> oh really <laughs> sorry of, for that kind of kind of because um, okay uh, if you look at the size and, and the complexity of, 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 of this project of implementing ERP. It's, it's unbelievable. I, I, I think most people that haven't uh, faced that challenge, that there's no way you can know, uh, you know, the, the, the integration part with all the other, it's, it's, it's impossible work. But if you look at it from the agile perspective, just like you said, you know, I think implementing uh, ERP, I mean, if you have all the people, all the resources and, and you know, change management, uh, taking care of, yeah, maybe maybe you can do the whole thing at once, but uh, I would always recommend the, the agile approach. And, and, you know, if you're, if you're thinking of one mo of implementing one module, there is, you know, just, just, just do this one, learn, learn from it to so the second one, the, f the fifth one will be way easier. You know, if you, if you go through the journey and you have did this, you know, incremental uh, approach to uh, to implementation because ERP is a big thing, but we did talk about the modules that you can start with. You know, the one that that will that will provide you the most ROI. Start with that and then um, learn from it, and then uh, you know implement all the other modules. So, yeah. Anything else to add, or we can wrap it up, Adrian? We can wrap it up. Okay. Sure. Thank you. It was uh, it was great. We finally were able to talk about ERP. Uh, the heart of every organization, the heart of every well-managed organization that is uh, constantly monitoring the data and drawing conclusions. <laughs> so finally, finally we did that. So thank you and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Bye.